Welcome to Radflix 1997. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe Pinionated. What is a Radflix? Radflix is a movie that has stood the test of time. We have a panel of normal Canadians who have voted on these movies. We're certifying these movies rad. Forget what those asshats, the critics, the award shows told you in the past. We have time on our side. I mean, really, how many movies are you going to go back to 1997 and watch tomorrow? Consider watching these ones first. For 1997, the Oscars, this is the year the Titanic cleaned up. Titanic won Best Picture. James Cameron won Best Director. Jack Nicholson won Best Actor. That was for As Good As It Gets. Helen Hunt won Best Actress for as good as it gets. It's a great show. And Titanic too, I watched it multiple times in the theater. Some famous people lost include Princess Diana, Tragic Car Accident, Notorious B.I.G., Tragically Gunned Down, in my opinion, the greatest rapper of all time. Check out uh, my Notorious B.I.G. episode on this channel. The greatest rapper of all time. Rest in peace, Big Papa. Mother Teresa passed away in 1997. Jeff Buckley, actor Chris Farley, comedian, legend, SNL, especially love him and Billy Madison, obviously Tommy Boy, everything he was ever in. John Denver passes away. Jimmy Stewart from It's Wonderful Life. He was born in 1908, so whatever that makes him. Old Jacques Cousteau, Michael Hutchins, Burgess Meredith. He's the coach in Rocky. I remember really loving him later on when he was in Grumpy Old Men. He got mentioned a few times as well. Plays Mick, sorry, and Rocky, his coach. Towns of Ansant passes away, 1997. All right, Radflix, 1997, first category, raddest horror suspense movie. Starting off with a banger, Event Horizon. Directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, starring Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill. This movie freaked me out. I remember watching this movie alone the first time I watched it and just my eyes bugging out of my head. You know, me and my neighbor watched it as well. Uh, close proximity. It's a great thriller, sci-fi. It's not like super scary, but it's definitely edge of your seat. Some parts are pretty freaky. Next up, Wes Craven's back for the sequel, Scream 2. Starring Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox and the rest of the gang. It's a whodunit murder. It's a thriller. Unbelievable that Wes Craven can follow up his previous successes almost as much as Stephen King. A lot of people like this one more than the original Scream 2. Up next, brought to you by David Fincher, The Game. Starring Sean Penn and michael douglas this movie just owns his brother conrad shows up has a gift for him and it's call this number participate in this game and it's gonna make your life better or fun one of those movies you don't know when the game is gonna start when it's gonna end and what the game is the game a thriller like this is definition of a thriller next violence brad is thriller horror goes to i know what you did last summer directed by jim gillespie starring sarah michelle geller and jennifer love hewitt the hot summer horror movie i know what you did last summer next finalist 1997 horror suspense goes to cube uh starring nicole de boer maurice dean wint it's a movie where these people wake up in a nightmare and these uh like a labyrinth or like a series of cubes each cubes filled with deadly traps and puzzles and then they start turning on each other cube 1997 next up from guillermo del toro jeremy northam and my girl mira sorvino the movie is mimic it's pretty cool it's about like killer cockroaches that are going to take over new york city and then mad scientist guy decides he's gonna create insect to wipe them out or this thing to wipe them out mimic and the winner goes to Event Horizon for raddest horror suspense of 1997. That's so cool. Number two on the list goes to Wes Craven sequel, Scream 2. Next category is raddest comedy 1997. First off, going with uh, Roger Nygaard's Trekkies. It's a documentary about Trekkies. I thought it was a mockumentary for the longest time. It's just so jaw-dropping how serious these people are. The dentist people, the lady that wears her gear to court, the guy who creates extra scenes for Star Trek. I never got into Star Trek, but I thought it was kind of cool after watching this show. And I watched the show many times. Love this one. Trekkies. Next up, my third favorite in the series goes to Vegas Vacation. National Lampoons, Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, the kids. I like Nick Papa Giorgio. I love Chevy Chase. This is one of his last big movies. Vegas Vacation. Up next, directed by Jay Roach. 
starring Elizabeth Hurley and Mike Myers. The movie is Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. I remember going to this movie with my mom. My mom was pretty straight laced. I remember a lot of eye rolling going on. It's about Austin Powers, this guy who's frozen. He's got to come back and kill Dr. Evil, both of which played by Mike Myers. Mike Myers back in a new series and it's after Wayne's World is done now. That's wrapped up. On to the next massive thing. Who throws a shoe? Honestly. Peter Cantanio directs the next finalist for Radish Comedy of 1997, The Full Monty. Mark Addy, Robert Carlyle, movie about a bunch of dudes who decide they're going to do a Chippendale act. Full Monty, international smash. I believe, I believe in, miracles. in miracles. Up next, directed by Paul Verhoeven, Starship Troopers, a satire science fiction movie. It's it's actually, it's super entertaining. Really good movie, kind of similar to Mars Attacks from the year previous. Directed by George Armitage, starring Minnie Driver and John Cusack. The movie is Gross Point Blank. It's a movie where a, a hitman is having an existential crisis and is invited back to his high school reunion it's weird it's a one-off it's a kind of oddly entertaining movie gross point blank i recommend it up next rad is comedy 1994 finalist goes to boogie nights directed by paul thomas anderson this is his debut or no sorry this is his second movie starring julianne moore and Mark Wahlberg, William H. Macy, Philip Seymour Hoffman, John C. Riley. Boogie Nights is a monumental, incredible movie. It's rated R. It's about the porn industry back in the 70s and 80s. It's kind of like a continuation of early 80s, 70s, Martin Scorsese style film. Check out my list on Paul Thomas Anderson on this channel. Movie edition. I'm counting down the top five movies from Paul Thomas Anderson director, writer. Paul Thomas Anderson, he wrote this uh, movie before he got famous. He actually made it beforehand, like a smaller project. I think it was called Dirk Diggler, the smaller project. Mark Wahlberg's an incredible actor. And I mean, I remember it, like even at this time, it was still sort of a question whether or not he could act, whether it was he was just a, an artist, like a singer, or whether he could do it. And he could. Up next, starring Joey Lauren Adams, Ben Affleck, directed by Kevin Smith, my boy. I ain't even got to know whether it's Jersey on for you, Kev. The movie is Chasing Amy. Kevin Smith pretty much shows up every single year at this point kind of goaded cult classic chasing amy's a great movie i love his movies i love the way that he talks about movies within his movies and awesome super entertaining i love watching anything he does anything anytime he's speaking i love the series he did where he spoke at the colleges chasing amy from the mind of kevin smith next up directed by frank oz starring joan cusack and Kevin Klein, the movie is In and Out. Basically, it's about this uh, teacher that's outed when his past student announces it on the Academy Awards, and he's uh, like from a small town. Frank Oz is such a great director, In and Out, and a winner for Radis Comedy of 1997. Yeah, baby, goes to Austin Powers, International Man of Mysteries, and that's pretty much across the board is the favorite just great just a spoof on 007 next category is action sci-fi adventure raddest for 1997 first up directed by my man and there's an episode on this channel directed by robert zemeckis the movie is contact 1997 robert zemeckis produced and directed this movie the movie is contact i saw this one in the theaters starring matthew mcconaughey and jodie foster once again zemeckis does things where he, with special effects and makes them believable it still looks good to this day this movie what an excellent movie in the theater I would love to watch this in the theater now and just crank it up. Even just the pulsing noise, the signal that these uh, aliens are sending sounds amazing. I fell hard for this one. You know, surprising ending, but it's a great, I think it's a good ending. It's kind of, it's got some closure. I'm a big fan of this movie and I'm a really big fan of Robert Zemeckis. So one of his movies right behind me here, Back to the Future. Up next, this one's been mentioned already, Starship Troopers. This is, definitely fits more into the action sci-fi in my opinion, even though it is pretty funny. So comedy is fitting. Paul Verhoeven directed Starship Troopers. Really cool special effects. Directed by Luke Besson, starring Mila Jokovic and Bruce Willis. 
in the fifth element. It's an action-packed sci-fi adventure. It follows this cab driver named Corbin, and he kind of gets involved in this quest to save the universe. And he's got to retrieve these stones and stop the bad guys. Up next, directed by John Woo, starring John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. The movie is Face Off. It's a movie where it is... FBI agent undergoes uh, a treatment to basically put this bad guy's face on his face, Caster Troy, John Woo, classic. Some people think this is a bad movie. A lot of people hate Nicolas Cage movies or they're just, they got a problem with Nicolas Cage. I shouldn't say hate. Why? It's good fun. John Woo, great stuff. Definitely one of the raddest action movies of 1997 is Face Off. Up next is David Fincher movies already been mentioned. The movie is The Game. It's definitely action and adventure. Great movie. Michael Douglas, this is one of his greatest roles. The Game, directed by Hayao Miyazaki from Studio Ghibli. The movie is Princess Mononoke. Uh, the voices, uh, Billy Bob Thornton's one of the voices in this one, dubbed in English. A young warrior named Ashitaka becomes embroiled in a struggle between the inhabitants of a remote village and the gods and spirits of the forest. Mind-blowing Studio Ghibli movies, every single one of them. They're just on heavy rotation around our house. Netflix has them all. I highly, highly, highly recommend them. I just, I want, if you're going to stop and watch any movie from the, these lists, watch a Studio Ghibli movie. Watch Princess Mononoke. Every single thing is a creation from Hayao Miyazaki's genius brain. And last finalist for action sci-fi adventure goes to Men in Black, starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, directed by... Barry Sonnenfield. Uh, it's about these guys that are in charge of uh, monitoring aliens on Earth. Men in Black. More like a kid's movie. It's definitely a science fiction. And a winner for raddest action sci-fi adventure of 1997, as voted on by the Normal People panel, goes to The Fifth Element, starring Bruce Willis. So I like these rad flicks. We get to honor Bruce Willis pretty much every episode. And in runner-up goes to Robert Zemeckis and Jodie Foster. Contact for raddest action sci-fi adventure of 1997. Next category is Family Movie Night. First off, directed by Tom Shattuck, starring Jim Carrey. The movie is Liar Liar. Maura Tierney as well in this one. Eh, it's about this guy that lies all the time. And I think his kid wishes he can't lie or something like that. Anyways, next thing you know, he can't lie. Yeah, his son makes a birthday wish. He has to tell the truth for 24 hours straight and he's a lawyer. It's Liar Liar. I find this more of a kid's movie, kind of like Men in Black. Up next, Radis Family Movie 1997 finalist goes to Trekkies. Insane fans of Star Trek. Trekkies. High Miyazaki's Princess Mononoke finishes in finalist for Raddest Family Movie 1997. One of the uh, actresses as well in this is uh, Gillian Anderson is one of the voices when it's subbed in English. Princess Mononoke, Raddest Family Movie, 100%. Up next, Paul Verhoeven's Starship Troopers, Raddest Family Movie Night. Eh. Yeah, maybe not for the really young ones, but uh, definitely kind of a cool science fiction-y comedy. Next, Raddus Family Movie comes from Jay Roach, Mike Myers, Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. Well, I watched it with my mom, so I guess it is a family movie. Austin Powers, yeah, yeah, maybe for teenagers. Up next for Raddus Family Movie, Men in Black from Barry Sonnenfield. And next is Flubber from Les Mayfield, starring Robin Williams, Marcia Gay Harden. It's uh, it's kind of like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, you know, the family scientist, and he creates this this goop, really bouncy substance called Flubber. It was green. I, was, I don't really remember too much of this one. And the last finalist from 1997 is Hercules. That's the cartoon Hercules, Disney's Hercules. Anyways, it's a big deal. It wasn't such a, it was almost kind of a bit of a flop, I think, as far as Disney movies go. Some people on a rad panel think it's worth mentioning in Raddest Family Movie Night, Hercules. For Raddest Family Movie of 1997, the winner is, goes to one of the raddest family movies of all time, Princess Mononoke, Studio Ghibli, Hayao Miyazaki, and that's voted on by the panel. Once again, if your kids have seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and the classics from Disney, like the all-time Dumbos of the world, they ain't seen nothing until they've seen Princess Mononoke and the rest that Studio Ghibli has to offer. Kiki's Delivery Service, My Neighbor Totoro, Spirited Away. There's so many incredible titles. This is one of the best, and it wins for Radis Family Movie of 1997. Nothing came close. Next category, Radis Drama. Uh, there's nine finalists. The finalists 
Pixar. First up, Boogie Nights from 1997, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. PTA brings it with Boogie Nights. Please check out my Paul Thomas Anderson episode on this channel, Boogie Nights. Up next from 1997, we're going with Ang Lee's movie, The Ice Storm, starring Kevin Klein, Joan Allen. It's dark. It's a dark movie and it's kind of weird and it's sort of artsy fartsy and it's all those things, but it's also Ang Lee in his prime, beautiful movie. This movie, like Ang Lee, also has a lot of textures, like very similar to Martin Scorsese and Paul Thomas Anderson. Ice Storm, great drama. Sigourney Weaver was in that too. Next up, directed by Harmony Corinne in his directorial debut, the movie is Gummo, starring Jacob Reynolds and Nick Sutton. And Gummo is similar to Larry Clark's kids. It's pretty intense. It follows these residents of this small tornado-ravaged town in Ohio. Bleak look at America white trash america kids like killing cats and selling them to the restaurant so they can get money to buy glue 10 out of 10 on the weird scale gummo 1997 next finalist from james cameron the movie is titanic this one stars leonardo dicaprio and kate winslet i love leo i love kate james cameron's great too they found the titanic in the 80s looking at the titanic on the big screen when it first came out thinking you know, the special effects were jaw dropping it's from james cameron so you're you're not expecting anything less than an awesome event terminator 2 and true lies had just come out and titanic this huge thing broke all the records it was the biggest movie of all time at the time and then the you know i think broken by maybe avatar later another james cameron movie the soundtrack was a huge deal celine dion my heart will go on that winter was like titanic the song was just on all the time even when the vhs's of this came out that was just another big deal as well everybody had to get a copy of titanic i remember the like amount of secondhand copies at the video store was the, the most i had ever seen anyways titanic's huge if you want to watch titanic just go to your local thrift store and they'll They'll gladly sell you a copy today. Also, River Phoenix was originally slated. I think James Cameron had River Phoenix in mind for the role of Jack before he tragically passed away. Next up, directed by James L. Brooks, starring Jack Nicholson, Helen Hunt, Greg Kinnear, and Cuba Gooding Jr. The movie is As Good As It Gets. Check out my Jack Nicholson episode on this channel. This movie definitely comes up. Excellent role. It's a great script with this guy. He's got OCD and Helen Hunt is excellent in this movie as well. Next finalist, Radis Drama, directed by Gus Van Sant. The movie is Goodwill Hunting, one of my wife's favorite movies, starring Matt Damon, Robin Williams, also co-written by Ben Affleck. So Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, uh, yeah, wrote this script. And that's sort of what got them super famous. Robin Williams is incredible in this movie. I know a lot of people, this is like probably their favorite movie. So many lines. Goodwill Hunting. Up next, we get the return of Quentin Tarantino with Jackie Brown, starring Pam Greer, Samuel Jackson. One of my favorite Robert De Niro roles, as well as Jackie Brown. Check out my Robert De Niro episode on this channel. Check out my Quentin Tarantino episode on this channel where you can find out more where these movies and roles rank according to me from an elmore leonard novel jackie brown the the novel was called rum punch i remember getting in reading elmore leonard after hearing quentin tarantino was going to make a movie from an elmore leonard book and then i ended up reading a bunch of them this movie was a bit of a letdown after two titans in pulp fiction and reservoir dog two other scripts that went out the door which that, that he sold natural born killers and true romance so it was a bit of a letdown it's still a bit of a letdown to this day in my opinion but some incredible performances it's got its moments this is one that should have been a bit shorter just an opinion i love de niro in this movie jackie brown next finalist has been mentioned in pretty much every category so far david fincher's the game starring michael douglas and sean penn michael douglas sean penn david fincher all-time like one of the greatest thrillers ever the game and last and certainly least in my eyes but very high across the panel here is la confidential i'm sorry i just never got into this one 
directed by Curtis Hansen. Huge cast. Kevin Spacey, Russell Crowe, Kim Basinger, LA Confidential, a neo-noir crime film set in the 50s Los Angeles. And the winner for Raddus Drama of... Are we in drama? Yeah, winner for Raddus Drama of 1997 goes to... Goes to Goodwill Hunting. Directed by Gus Van Sant. Starring Robin Williams and Matt Damon, famously written by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Robin Williams has so many incredible roles, but this is uh, one of his best. I think this one, he really kind of, he's just on another level again. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. We love him around here and this movie too. And the runner up for Radis Drama goes to Boogie Nights with the third place finish from Ang Lee's The Ice Storm. Next up is Most Watched. Okay, so Most Watched, our panel of normal people, panel of normal Canadians. First up is Zox. Zox got Most Watched. Uh, just above the rest, there is Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting's number one. And next up for Ian, most watched. Uh, third place went to Men in Black. Second to The Fifth Element. And his most watched movie of 1997 goes to Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery. For Jesse, third most watched goes to Boogie Nights. Second most watched goes to The Game. And most watched goes to Goodwill Hunting. For Carol, third most watched goes to Austin Powers. Second most watched goes to As Good As It Gets. And most watched goes to Goodwill Hunting. For myself, third most watched goes to As Good As It Gets. Second most watched goes to Contact, Robert Zemeckis. And my most watched from this year goes to John Woo's Face Off. Most watched by the Normal People panel goes to Goodwill Hunting. And next category is Raddest Movie of 1997. The finalists are The Ice Storm. Ice Storm is a finalist. Next up, Princess Mononoke, Hayao Miyazaki's Studio Ghibli, one of the greatest animated movies of all time. Princess Mononoke, next finalist for Raddest Movie, 1997. Goes to PTA's Boogie Nights, Paul Thomas Anderson. After that, we got Mike Myers with Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery, finalist for Raddest Movie. As Good As It Gets, gets a nod for finalist, Raddest Movie of 1997. Good Will Hunting, just mentioned Gus Van Sant, finalist, 1997. LA Confidential, it's a panel, uh, Democracy, yeah. Damn it. Next finalist, Event Horizon, 1997. That's cool. And the final finalist for 1997 for Raddest Movie of 1997 goes to The Game. For Raddest Movie of 1997, the winner goes to goes to Goodwill Hunting, directed by Gus Van Sant. And the runner-up for Raddest Movie of 1997 goes to Boogie Nights. A couple of killer finalists for Raddest Movie of 1997. Shout out to Goodwill Hunting. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. So that's it for Raddest Movie of 1997. Thank you to the Normal People panel. Thank you to the musician for contributing some music to this show. And remember to check the description below for links to the playlist of movie trailers. So every movie mentioned on this episode, there's a trailer playlist that's right below in the description there's a link there links to my patreon like and subscribe hit the bell let me know your picks for each category for each year rad flicks also check out all the other mentioned uh episodes throughout this episode <laughs> check out you know quentin tarantino and all those other uh, Robert Zemeckis list that I have on this channel remember to live and let live be normal be nice mind your own business feel free to gank my list I'm sorry I'm a little low on facts and high, and high on, high opinions. on opinions. opinions respect to the raddest movie of 1997 Goodwill Hunting I'll catch you on the next one Get my ass on through the door